So 343 just officially revealed Forge for the first time. Let's check it out. And this is all in Forge. I just, re yeah, just recreated the campaign level. <laughs> campaign. So if I want to duplicate this hex right here, I can just simply uh, duplicate it, and then I'm going to snap the magnet to it, and boom. Dang. That's super That's quick and easy. Real, real nice. <laughs> or if I want to pit it back, I can hit redo. And that's a first. And that's a, that's a first. That was a yes. huge community wish list uh, yeah. when I first started here. It was, it was top of my quality of life update stuff. He's a forge so much back in Halo Three, and then, yeah, having a redo button would have been so yeah, nice so back then. Tap the X button, and it will automatically snap to the ground. Oh wow! The object, which has been a huge blessing for spawning any objects in. So I'm gonna fly out of the world here. I have some objects that I utilize uh, <laughs> for making this space. A giant grunt. And then I can build to scale it down, scale it upwards. Um, That's so nice. Oh my gosh. Plane. So if you see here, I've grabbed this object and I have flattened it because I'm really liking the texture or the material that we have on here for this face. It's crazy just, how they can uh, scale it up like that and not have the textures look all stretched yeah, and, and weird. We actually have oh these my awesome god, that looks so good. <laughs> that train, uh, oh that my gosh. Added to is that all one train. piece? Uh, mm -hmm. This is the object size we're what it's oh my gosh, in. really? And we can even make it smaller. That is the same piece, yeah. <laughs> it could be that's crazy how that's the same map. piece. Yep, and I can even make it that's, smaller. It's just like, how like, do they make I the texture add, like, work without making it look all stretched and weird? Like, that's so crazy. Oh, I feel like it's like the scene one, like, from stripes, Step Brothers where he's like, there's just so uh, much room for activities. Oh wow, look at that. Or we can go through the list as well, too. Same thing with the color. You just changed like one of the characters in there like that? That's so crazy. Yeah, a little bit. One of the key things that we added to um, the object browser this time around was the ability to preview the object before you place it. So oh, uh, that's you can huge. See the size of I thought you could do that in Halo Three and Reach. Um, I remember correctly, but that's yeah, Halo you five, absolutely need to be able uh, to preview just, before you actually place it down. Box, right, and so my biggest issue is just that it's uh, hard so to big, find what you're looking for there. in these uh, menus. And, or you don't uh, even know you what know, you could use unless you scroll through every single scaling. thing. Um, all these sometimes you scroll through like object 8000 you're like, oh, that one's the one I need. So that that's a pretty sick really prefab yeah, right really, there. Really clever. Like so for like a hollow table, these are. Like that's a, awesome. Satellite? We have multiple control schemes mm -hmm. for controller, correct? Yeah, oh, multiple control schemes. Nice. Four different control schemes. Um, we've got a default one. We've got a default alt, I believe, that switches the up and down buttons because that was some concern mm -hmm. to some people. That we've got a legacy one that kind of is as close as we could get to the Halo 5 um, control scheme as we could. Ah, you said legacy right, so like Halo 5. I was kind of hoping more legacy like Reach in and Halo 3. Those are what I was right familiar here. with. Uh, it's called oh my Q. god, look at this uh, Forge map. Right oh here. my gosh. Well, this is Why is this not in the game right here. now? <laughs> Dude, like <laughs> the variance between like an actual map, dev map, and Forge map is like basically non-existent now. Like this is incredible. I wish this is not in the game. If there was a map in Halo 5 with this level of detail, you would get like 10 frames a second. It was awful. Pretty it, right around playable. Us, now, this uh, is today, only like 65% of the budget, and this looks Forge absolutely in so much incredible. Some... All right, well, that's the full video right there. Right now, yeah, Forge looks rather incredible. Um, I mean, it didn't really show anything that we didn't know already about Forge for the most part, mainly because people have been able to play around with it for so long. But uh, that was a really cool showcase of what Forge can do. Uh, just like I said, when I was showcase that one map by was that was created by the Forger Council member. I was like, how is this not in the game yet? Like, why? What's holding this back, man? Like, I, we're only getting two maps for the winter update when it comes to Forge maps. And I think they're more kind of like prefab kind of generalized maps, if that's, if that's what I remember correctly from the developers. But this is our first official look, so they kind of had to start basically just kind of like, this is what we can do, what we can pull off for right now kind of stuff. Which, I mean, what we actually know, what the general public knows about Forge right now, it's not that surprising if this was the official reveal people will be losing their minds so the recap on a lot of things so they stated that forge will be part of the free to play multiplayer that's super important uh, they actually use campaign assets from the game to put in the forge which is really awesome you can see when they remade that section uh after the bracken 
uh, portion that like looked just like the campaign, which is super cool. The object scaling is super important for forging. Uh, being able to press X to place it right on the ground as someone who used to forge is super nice right there as well. Uh, being able to move the monitor through objects is a huge quality of life improvement as well. So you don't have to like awkwardly try to angle it just right to kind of sneak it like a little piece in or something. That's important right there for sure. Uh, also be able to asset name things so then you can actually just kind of go to what you need to look for rather than just kind of like find like, oh, which one was it? Uh, quality of life stuff. That's really what they kind of showcase a lot with this video right here, which is more quality of life improvements from Forger as such. Like a lot of these little things add up to really significant improvements when it comes to Forge. Uh, also like the radio menu stuff, like there's gonna be a lot of buttons you're gonna have to press to make Forge work in this game. And so that's gonna be really important. Uh, the prefabs, which we knew, I think prefabs were available in Halo 5, if I remember correctly. I didn't Forge a lot, a lot in Halo 5. Uh, but that's going to be really great to be able to kind of share out with people. Um, I'm assuming there has to be some form of a file share or some update to Waypoint. They didn't mention that in this video. Uh, I think that would be absolutely crucial for people to actually do be able to share things unless you're just going to be sharing files on PC alone. We'll see how that turns out. Also, multiple control schemes, which is going to be really nice. Uh, that's one of my biggest issues when I tried to play Forge in Halo 5. I was like, wh wh how do I place an object? <laughs> there's like some, the control schemes are just so backwards rewiring of my mind, which I've heard Halo 5's control schemes were better. I'm assuming Halo Infinite's control schemes were probably even better uh, since I've been working directly with the community when it comes to upgrading Forge. Uh, though I was still just kind of hoping for like a true legacy mode when it comes to the controls. He said the legacy controls are like Halo 5's legacy controls, which is like, well, I kind of want to just like Halo 3, Halo Reach style controls just to help me start out, get into Forge. And then once if I wanted to really improve things, then I would go into that. It's kind of the same way with like multiplayer controls, right? With the default controls, they'll get you playing. Yeah, but it's not the most optimal way. Most likely bumper jumper or other kind of button schemes are a lot more optimal when it comes to playing multiplayer in Halo Infinite. But you just kind of want that basic, you know, easy input to kind of get people playing. The hugest thing about they mentioned in here is the object count from Halo 5 to Halo Infinite is a massive jump. That's nearly four and a half times more objects you can place into Halo Infinite's Forge compared to Halo 5's, which is a massive upgrade. They also mentioned with, with the Slipspace engine upgrades, which is the, I think the first time we've actually heard any good improvements when it comes to the, the new engine for Halo Infinite, that it reads static and dynamic objects differently, right? So then, Dynamic objects, you have to kind of calculate those every single frame. For static objects, the game reads as just going like, you know, we don't have to worry about it. Nothing's going to change. Nothing's going to move. Don't have to worry about it. Don't have to calculate it. Allowing that much more space for people to create way more things. Like we saw with that Forge map, like that crazy amount of detail, and you're still not dropping frames. If you're playing like that same level of detail by Halo 5, it just wouldn't be possible to even play on that map. We have another video coming out about scripting and that kind of stuff. So that's gonna be huge. Just going to the nodes of it, which looks like crazy giga brain, like level forging right there, but it's gonna be such a game changer as well as file management they mentioned. So maybe there'll be a file share thrown in the game. Uh, we do know the custom game browser is coming in March, uh, but I think the most important thing is getting that file share available forge when that comes out uh, because people are gonna need to share their content around to be able to, for people to download it and play it. If you guys like this video, make sure to tap that like button. Greatly helps support out the video and channel. If you want to see 20 leaked, awesome Forge comp pieces of content that you definitely need to check out, there's a video for you right there. Thank you much for watching. Greatly appreciate it. Catch you on the next one. Peace out.